just a few questions. Couple things out here on the number eight. Do it next next time. So that I think we're going to do so. Hundred twenty calls for service, not including the leech. I see if we can have any civil breakers. There were a handful of four century burglaries that are currently in the process of investigation for charges that have been sent to the state's attorney's office. One of the burglaries resulted in the arrest of three suspects, one disturbance robbery, and incident that did not meet the charges. All the crashes were minor, no injuries. Parking issues continued with the snow. Um, we said that the temps going up and down all the effect was the contractor here. Touch on that. Um, I have made an effort this week. I didn't on one trailer that belonged to a contractor um, that I wasn't able to immediately identify who it belonged to. That's after it had been paid for several weeks and buried in snow. On um, one other, I located a private citizen who owned it. He was able to get that removed. Um, and I haven't gotten a chance today to see if the other two have gotten removed. I kind of guessing they did. So even though we have had signage issues, I've discussed it with my bosses and with uh, the fire chief. I think I can easily articulate that snow piled up around the trap. A trailer creates a traffic hazard, meeting the criteria to have a trailer in um, I will do make some efforts to contact and figure out the owner's are. Um, I'm not going to spend all of it. This time it's probably four or five hours the other morning tracking down people and the traffic. Obviously, I don't think the city of Florida wants to pay me to track people down all the time. So. No, necessarily. I mean, most of, for the most part, most of those guys should know that they're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah, so so moving forward, I, I'm going to probably end up paying them, and they're going to have 48 hours to get them over. I mean, that's fair. Um, as far as the burglaries go, um, so we did have. It's not on here. Maybe we should think about adding it as a category. There were seven quote unquote burglaries last month, three of which were kind of the same incident. The one that was on the news where those three suspects were arrested, two of them were our houses under construction, and another house was an accomplice of other burglary. Um, another one was all in Horace completed an option. Yep, all in Horace. But I'll kind of explain the rest. So there were seven. Um, one of them, a con one contractor, uh, another house being built along for like 
the same home builder and took like a heater out of it and stuff. They got a very good sort of out and maybe we're returning. No harm, no fall. Um, it still gets us the um, Another one, a trailer was being sold. Um, <coughs> and the people looking at it thought it was somebody had possibly broken into it after investigating just how the trailer was. So, <laughs> again, no burglary. Um, <coughs> somebody heard some noise in the house, called us to check it out. Nothing suspicious. Well, on that one, we had the three Rattler legit breweries that we had all the argument involved, and it wasn't really random. Like I said, they were there for a specific house, and I think they just took it as an opportunity to explore the other ones nearby. Um, and then I took one over there in Northwood uh, that was unoccupied. Um, it was reported as a burglary after my investigation. I don't think it was a burglary. I think it had uh, nobody had been there for a while. Um, Either a window got blown in or was latched all the way. I think a pipe froze and then caused water to leak in the basement. So I, there's, there was no sign of any entry, force entry, no tracks. So I don't really pursue that one being a burglary as well. So it sounds like a lot, but realistically, when I'm reading through them and looking through them, only three that I can look at say 100% were burglaries or those three that are all connected to the one and spent. And they've already been in the system. So. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm kind of glad the rest of them are non issue. Yeah. So that's where, yeah, we, like, with everything we do, we can't jump to conclusions. We go through and read through them. We have to categorize them as something or dispatch, but when we send them out, they have to put them as something. Sure. Um, and that's what they expect. So. Um, I didn't have anything else that I saw looking through that was of any concern. Okay. Uh, animal calls are four this last month, so there's a drastic improvement. Um, yeah. Nothing that really raised concern there. Yeah. And 128 calls, too. It's not like we're getting, you guys are getting a big increase in that meter. So. No, um, yeah, I mean, I think we're just 14150. So, yeah. Um, unfortunately, with our staffing, I've been getting pulled away a lot from Morris. I saw the majority of my day, unfortunately, not Morris. Uh, we got three new people that are supposed to be hitting the road. In the next couple of weeks, so yeah. that helps significantly. So those numbers might pick up again. It might be generous. I know you guys are trying to encourage that. Yeah. I went from here to Buffalo, Fargo, back to here. Where I was all over the place today. Yeah. I've been on some miles. No, I appreciate the, the effort you guys are putting in under the circumstances you're dealing with. I mean, uh, the nice thing is, I think our uh, <clears throat> night staff understand that. That night staff's done a little bit better um, staff, so that I have I have another day of spending some time. So hopefully, you notice know, that. So appreciate it. Um, had a resident contact me about fireworks again. Uh, just a reminder. <laughs> I know you were there that night. And I, there was I, wasn't, I wasn't. Two quad cars uh, there that night. So uh, just these are your best. Yeah, no, I wasn't there, but I didn't know. Okay. So, um, yeah. You think there might be a demo? Do the motors wire here? Like, there is. Yeah. We're dealing with it the best we can. Thank you. Um, you don't have anything else I still got to report to the from today, and I'm supposed to be done that for it, so yeah. I'm not covered that. Unless you guys have anything else, no? Well, well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. I was available to do come up with anything. So, okay. so I guess thank you. Thank you. All right, like I said, Gene is off the table here, so we'll go to that. I think that she got this on the gym. What do you think of Mr. Mayor, members of the council? Uh, I thought kind of an overview of what, what we're doing here, what we have public hearings. Uh, for Southdale Farms fourth edition in the plot uh, and rezone of uh, that development. Um, <coughs> planning Commission recommended uh, approval of the plot and rezone. Um, that's, that's my end of it. The germs that you want to hear from the engineer or open the public hearing uh, plot and rezone. What I'll do is I'll probably go through these more of the time while well, it's seen great redundant, but I'm so glad for the public hearing. Jim, is there anything on there that was uh, anything we need to concern ourselves with? Saw the ordinary. No, the only thing was a lot, lot, lot of blanks. That was one of the items that 
Yeah, Russ, do you have any concerns about any of this? It seems like not, because I've looked, I read through the report too, but I just want to make sure because they changed your mind in the last year. <laughs> no, all good. All right. Any of you guys have any concerns or issues? The public got concerns or issues? That's a good tool. This affects where I live. I'm concerned about everything going into my backyard. I trust that everybody's going to do the best that they can to create a buffer between the existing residents. Yep, and um, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but um, one thing that I know Chelsea mentioned it. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, so I just introduced yourself. Okay, so you are uh, I'm Chris Mack. Um, I'm with the uh, new Horizon Home. And uh, presenting um, uh, some units of Park. Copy of the um, covenant and restriction that all have been as we're developing that. If you look on page, uh, page five, um, we have a highlighted area there. Um, and that is uh, another concern over on Southdale First, where there was a bunch of homes that look very similar. Yeah. Uh, so, what, what we're doing to address that, is there's nothing in the city ordinance that can really change that. Um, we are um, putting into place, if you look at one of the folded pages, um, it, it would not allow, so if a, a, a builder has more than four consecutive lots, it will not allow them to use that same house for, four, for, for not, another four houses. Um, so if you look at that handout, um, you can see this is where we've done another development. Um, where we would require this on the street view, um, and we wouldn't let that repeat again for another right four. So um, that's something we are going to implement uh, on top hill four, and then we're also going to do it on third. Um, we're able to do that um, before we close, and uh, we will do it uh, on the tips that will be coming this winter too. Thank you. Oh, that would be good. Oh, then one, I guess the, the one bike that one thing that I did is on the last page. Um, just kind of showing, you know, the city needs wants to be a uh, pedestrian friendly and bike friendly community. So i show kind of how the bike connectivity will work um, with this development yep. and how it will tie into. Um, the future, um, like that, that you're kind of getting on that page. So, but you guys have to put that in there. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's all and a good improvement in the area. You have an opinion on that? I think I'll do it all. So, the houses that are um, staying low are a very entry level style. Are those lots the same size lots as these lots, or uh, how do you regulate? Because there's not a whole lot of ways to switch up the look of that dial. You're saying those entry level homes mm -hmm. that they're the high level ones <laughs> the garage. Um, it's you know they're pretty much locked into how they look. Would this require that that builder to like mix those within the development then basically? Yeah. <laughs> Do it by um it means the same house but you can do it with different offline. Yeah. So you can see on one yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know that style of house is hard to switch up the roof lines a little bit too. Yeah. But it, and that's something where um so one thing we've been talking with our builders and all the newer ones too. We're going to make them this before they submit for permit, we want to approve them. Um and, uh, we have a couple of people in our office that, that do the reviews, um, and then they would get reviewed before they come to the city hall. Um, 
what it's actually developing to it. Awesome. Um, and that's something that um, we've told them. Um, I think um, <clears throat> our uh, director or our uh, closing director, she's emailed all the builders now. I um, made her aware of that. So I think she's working with us. <laughs> Now too, so mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do moving forward. Yeah. I really like that you put this together. Yes, thank this you so much. So helpful for us. I mean, we, we have some very serious concerns, and you've taken the time to uh, hit my button with these two things, um, yep. which is a really big deal because this is preserving the beautification of our city and making sure. That is accessible for people of all ages to get through safety of our children having access, you know, not having to go entire blocks to get around. I'm pleased with what I'm seeing here. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions on this one? All right, I'm going to put code in the public hearing room on this class. Once you guys are ready to get out here, Motion to accept the class. Hold on, make that motion. Motion to make it a second. 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 All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, let's talk about the rezone. Let's just open it up for a public hearing around the way. Who is there anything different you want to do on that one? Just know that the, the rezone changed a lot from PEG to R6 identity residential, which fine with this area once they're done now in this area. Do you have anything on that? Thank you so much. I didn't look at your list. Can you make a motion to approve the rezone? Oh, yeah. I'll open that up. I'll close the public hearing. Yeah. Motion to approve the rezone. Second. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, all right. <clears throat> Did we get the next two? Yes. Next item is the preliminary engineering report. The preliminary engineering report describes the existing conditions of proposed proposed improvements to the area. Uh, South Hill Farm Court consists of approximately 405 single family homes with some commercial and large lot on the north side. That being said, it's a very large subdivision. We look at it. The first improvement is all. I can use the NFS for quite a role to the extent. So, the thing that we're working through right now is from taking it all to the drain for a second. Diane River, working with the Southeast Cat, and has um, sending off the air and how to do that. And we're working on a little bit ahead of the game, which we're planning to fix up the next couple of weeks. Actually, we're moving the final, you know. If the address one of the libraries is going to be, we've been working on some of that to uh, splitting out the flows to the Diane, grade 27, and then how to create the site and how to balance the site. But right now, she's a pretty expensive project, but I think we're going to roll over around 13 million or so. <laughs> that is high. I would personally pay that. There is um, a million dollars of fill in there that we're looking to bring down, trying to balance the site a little bit better. Okay. But I wanted to present something to you that would probably more realistic than trying to estimate as well. So if we do, once we get through the design, we get close, we can amend the report to bring that down to our final decision as we do. What is the best and most economical decision? Well, if they make a half our firm. Bring some of that stuff into Green 27 or so. Problem? Right now, we can't exceed the, the preliminary, the pre runoff. Yeah, so that's why we're looking at splitting a little yeah. bit of but then we might end up having the source and more that we're still kind of getting through that. <laughs> this is the high level planning stuff to get us established the project. It's the budget for it. Open there. So um, everything will be city water, city sewer, gas world, water user, sewer will be. Illustration with the city of Fargo for season. Stormwater is collected through the three ponds that are in the first edition and the third edition. We're still hiring the office to make sure that all the steps are Yeah, those ponds 
for the size of the development seems small, but it's probably it's really it big. is big. Right. That's there's some some truth in that. Southdale uh, Farms were is on the way on the highest pile, high spot go through. And the pond size is kind of dictated by the development. And the these lots in the pond utilize that. So, so that's part of the reason why they're a little bit smaller. But the one is a little bit deeper than what the uh, pond number three, I think, is the deeper one of the, of the three. But Are there retention requirements for those larger lots on the north side? Or the there will be. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we're trying to regionally look at those into where we're at with the third edition or the fourth edition. And then the fifth and sixth, they go down to the first edition. <clears throat> you addressed my only concern on this, which is current. Yeah. So, as long as we are comfortable that we have some options there and moving forward. So, so, I didn't count. How many lots are you guys looking at doing on that area? 205. 205? Right, right now, that's what South Joe Farms Services, the fourth edition. Okay. Yes. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? This is kind of boilerplate to get the show. Yes, Rob. So, when you talk about splitting and going to the uh, river, how do you intend to get to the river if you do that? The station. The station, not the ditch. Not the ditch. Okay. We, there's been a lot of discussions on that using 17 to get. We use a ditch. Okay. Happy. I like to hear that. I don't like water in ditches anymore when we do rest, so good. Built. Okay. Anybody else got any other questions on this one? Well, like I said, this is kind of standard procedure that we're going to use. Um, I'll look for a motion on C and make the motion to do a approval now. I'll make the motion to approve the preliminary hearing report. Second one. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And then I'm going to be the second one we have. Good morning. 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 All right, Lucas, you got number 10. Yes, yeah, so again, Mr. Mayor, I'll just give you an overview of uh, what's going on here. <coughs> the subject property uh, has a request for a rezone and uh, a conditional use permit. Um, I think you guys got the report and we have seen the, the plans for, yep. for this proposed project. So it's a project that's going to entail a three year old golf course. Um, with a shipping facility, a clubhouse, and some accessory structures. Just for everybody's benefit, why don't you tell us where it is in darkness, like a uh, Edom Industrial Park? Yeah, so it's in, it's in Visto uh, Industrial Park on the east side, east side. Yep. Um, of the first, industrial park. First lot west of the pond. Yeah. Just to side. give everybody an idea of where we're at here. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Mr. Mayor, the first thing you want to do uh, yep. is the, the rezone on this one. Uh, the rezone is going from light industrial to general commercial. Uh, the reasoning for that is uh, the intended use of the property uh, seems to fit better with uh, general commercial rather than uh, the light industrial. Right. Okay. Then when you guys talk about this, that was what it was the urban thing with our Correct. So all of this, though, um, all of the additions that are over there are either commercial or industrial right. already. Yep. Uh, and so again, the reasoning for switching it to the C degree general commercial is the intended use is because there is more than one intended use for this property, but yep. they fit more so with the general commercial. I need to better understand the intended use of this property. I'm aware of who the owner is. Um, I've seen an awful lot of videos and things of that nature to give me a good chuckle. 
Um, the only question I have, I've seen some things that, that deviate from our norm in the industrial park, and I want to ensure that I've done my due diligence to ask the questions. Um, <coughs> if this really fit in the location that was being proposed, and it's not going to be a mission for events to any of the neighbors. I see we have a beautiful golf course here. There's some ponds, there's some villas, an executive suite, a garage, clubhouse. Is this private or public? Because it's got quite a parking area there. Private. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, that being said, then we also have a phase one and two building mm -hmm. with some fairly unique entrances coming into it. Um, Talk to me a little bit about what surrounds this area at this point in time. Generally unimproved. Completely unimproved. So, um, and there are no industrial industrial areas that are planted or proposed surrounding this at this point in time? Most of what is proposed in that general area is storage units, shop condos, stuff along those lines. And I believe the applicant owns the property to the south as well. He owns the three parcels to the south. Also, so that Good. whole block per se could be a complex. The, the applicant actually owns all of those four blocks. Good. Yeah. Okay, that's what I want to know because I think that what I've seen in Visto's separate of this is very different. Um, and I understand what this is and goal may be on this. I can envision that um, based on the success that the capital markets have. However, I want to ensure that we are doing our due diligence to make sure that this fits our community. Just, just so everybody knows, uh, for variance here, kind of 17 to be on the south. So after these three adjacent lots that the applicant owns, mm -hmm. there's a great thing further south. It's kind of or not 17, not under, under 14. Yeah. And then to the east is the pond. Good. So they don't have anybody to the south or east of them. That's what I want to know. Yeah. Good. And perfect. Perfect. I think it's retention ponds. No concerns there. No, and it goes far as any concerns at retention time. No, actually, this will benefit because with, you'll see there's three ponds on uh, the golf course that we want to utilize. The ditch drain equals full. Guess so. We'll be rerouting some great issue there as we'll be with the answer with them as far as who owns what deep levels. Channeling our water. Okay, so let me open up for a public meeting on the rezones when we get that started. Um, yeah. Anybody the public have any questions or comments about the rezone for this area? Thanks. I don't know. Okay. Rest I'm assuming you guys thought this was really all well, went through you guys and I got to see the approval. Yeah, one of the reasons for the for the rezone is if we left it mine industrial, then we'd have a, a list of conditional use permits we'd have to do. Yep. This, this is this is the cleanest way. Having when I first read this before I saw what it was, I thought, no, we don't do a conditional use permit to make it. Oh. I'm glad you read the rest of it. Then I read the rest of it and I said, okay, I understand this is the only way we can do this. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay, so if nobody else has any other comments on this one, I'm going to close the public hearing. I know we'll be looking for a motion to accept the rezone. I'll make a motion to accept the rezone. Second. Okay. Okay, so motion to close it as a site. Right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Um, conditional use permit. Open that up for public period right away. Um, Lucas, you want yeah, to? Yeah, so, so this one, the conditional use permit is only for uh, the shipping facility. Okay, so under the um, CG General Commercial, that's a conditional use, is um, shipping facility. I don't know my ordinance is occurring, but I think that's that's how it was defined under permitted uses or conditional uses. Warehouse. Warehouse facility, that's what it is. Um, and so that again, that's why <laughs> it was pushed to do this as C3. Uh, so the facility that you see on the, the north side of the property, 
that is where he will have um, warehouse operations and shipping of merchandise and stuff will come out of that building. That's where we have that phase one, phase two. I believe the West building is done first, correct? Yes, the West so, one is phase one. And then these lines. And then they indicate that uh, the second area that they would probably start construction would be their office. Come all star, you know, operating so you have offices, sort of like that, and call halls. It's mainly for interacting with their guests and when they do interviews and different videos, you know, things like that. It's interacting with them. And then phase three would be the additional warehouse space. I don't believe I have the time while we sat with him. We're going to be doing all these other buildings and routing. I think they're as, as needed as it's developed for them. But for the council and public's information, yeah. you know, the condition use permit only applies to two of those. Yeah, just two of those. And the planning commission didn't have any additional conditions to put out the condition use permit besides to say that, yes, you can have a, a warehouse on the property. So if the council desires, you guys can place any conditions that you want on that condition use permit. Um, talk to me a little bit about how trucks are going to get in and out of this facility because I, I see driveways, but I don't see anything larger. And I want to make sure that we're not, as trucks are preparing to slow down and enter and or enter. What we're told they're coming off of industrial drives at that point, pulling in, open dock is that. This diagonal, the diagonal structure. Diagonal, the loading dock. So, um, provided there is no bottleneck at that point, the truck should be able to pull in, do their maneuvering, and pull out that way. Because that's what they pull out that way. Okay, so the plan is to pull in the second driveway and then back to the loading dock and then pull out. Right, well, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. And they did the, what the truck frequency wasn't. We're not talking about not not semi, right. not semi. Yeah, more along the lines of should box be trucks. Yeah, yeah, like box trucks. Sounds right. Like, yeah, should be trucks. Yes, Amazon. I think so. Okay. Which would make sense for what they're doing. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other conversation about the conditional use permit? Anybody? All right. I'll close the public hearing on that. Look for motion to accept the conditional use permit. I'll make that one for the stuff that we will need to come with this next. Okay, Sarah makes a motion to get in second. Second. Great to All right. All in favor say aye. 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 So, you can All right. On to 11. Right, we got this one. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas prepared real quick. Basically, this is a continuation from last council meeting's discussion in regards to uh, constructing New City Hall. Uh, as you recall, there are a couple different approaches that can be done in, in regards to the construction of the building. We do a design bid build, often called world bid. So we go out and it out, like how we do a road project. Uh, you also do agency construction management. So you have a company that you can identify or a project manager, and they may go off with their bids. Um, might not necessarily be a low bid. Um, or also, it's a construction project. That's a good the overall points we have here scope of the new building and the facility, all the elements. Set a budget and contractor has to meet the budget or change that budget that has to be approved by customer services. So we tabled the discussion so the council had a chance to review this memo that was prepared. Uh, we need to know what approach council would like us to take. That way we can make sure that we follow the appropriate steps because they do have different steps or deviate a little bit and a proper protocol in order to go through. That procurement process. So that was what we're looking for. 
discussion and the council uh, can direct us what approaches would like us to follow. Yeah. And I did some conversation with folks here too, but I'm going to also start. I'm just going to go from one end to the other here to get feedback on this. So, Sarah, what's your take on this? I have uh, two methods that I am most comfortable with. Um, the first one I'm seeing is the CMAR, uh, construction management at risk. Um, just because you have your employee construction manager, um, they provide advice to the governing body, which is us in this case. And um, the contract is negotiated, uh, package for public improvement, as he says here, gets put together, and then contracts with subcontractors and suppliers for the actual construction of the public improvement. It's all public knowledge. It's all <coughs> It's not necessarily no bid. Sometimes it's most qualified, and that's something that, with the experience I've had in the industry, sometimes you get what you pay for, right? Um, so I'm very partial to that. My second choice, if I have a rank case, would be the design big build method. Um, that obviously is a, a very common method um, within municipalities, cities, that type of thing. Um, in that particular case, you do use low bid. Um, it can get you into situations um, just because of with low bidders and um, Sometimes that can result in a lot of change orders, in my opinion. Um, but that would be my second go to. And the third would be the um, agency construction management, just because I don't feel that has as many controls with it. So, yeah, I'm kind of along those lines too. I really like the at risk method just because I think um, what's important is that the community members do the, um, the full cost. Of them, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, so that's kind of where I'm leaning towards as well. Sure. And sure. there's no guessing like right. community members can just know that this is what we're doing and this is what we got. Um, I like the design bid build. Um, it's the uh, tried and true that, you know that's the way it's kind of always been done and that's the way i recommend my clients to do it just because there's a reason for it it worked um when you're talking about getting numbers you know as a, as an architect there is means to getting numbers um if that's what you need um as far as low bid i think you know the low the bidders have to be um it's have to be qualified. Um, so that isn't the change orders, I think, can kind of come into place anywhere. Uh, but I think that, you know, it's the architect's job to go through all these questions, make sure you have the answers you need. Um, a lot of them, you know, there's there's uh, means to getting initial prices if that's something that is desired. So. You're not wrong. You used a key term that I think everyone here should be aware of. Qualified. So qualifying your bid, qualifying the contractor in that methodology um, really eliminates a lot of the disparities that I mentioned previously. So that that is something I think that is very pertinent. Yeah, and I think I mean you have as a council, you have both Sarah and I up here um, to help with some of those you know whatever process we've taken to make sure that some extra due diligence is done um with our knowledge base so again that's my opinion so i'm not gonna have her burn whatever that's fine that's why i'm asking yeah yeah um i guess if, if it were my decision i'd be doing uh construction management at risk um you know your uh, what you're going to be getting upfront as far as costs. Um, it allows you to try to control costs, I think, better. Um, obviously, you have, um, I'm always <laughs> kind of uh, leery of going with the lowest bid. Sometimes you do get what you pay for. Um, you might not get as high quality construction. So I, um, I've never been a fan of that. So, 
I guess like for myself to um, just we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago or whatever it was, we ran into some folks who have gone through some of these processes before. Um, and I think their consensus was too is you know the average what we need to do the cost of it. Um, and it was more a lot more uh, transparent. And that's kind of what I want to do with this project is make sure that we understand what we're doing from start to finish. And I think just the advice I got was that's your best option. Is to go back. So when you guys talk about costs up front, what are you looking for? Basically, what we're going to come up with, what are we looking at for the cost? What's our cap? You know, that's going to come down to the not to exceed. Not to exceed, but that also comes down to us trying to plan on the head. Us uh, and our and our part is we're trying to ensure that we design south correctly so we know the that cap and then we stay within that cap. That's what that's what I've been told. It's, it comes on us to start to plan this out too, so that we all agree that when we put the top end on this thing, that's what we're going to stick with with that contractor. The architect is going to stay within that as well. Yeah. And I think when you're talking numbers, especially in this climate, it's very difficult to say, you know, as a, from my experience with the contractors, it's very hard for them to really put, um, you know, the number exactly, you know, with until they get all the drawings and put it out for bid and get their final bids, it's only a guess, you know, it's, they can't really nail it down. So I think when you're talking about budget, you're, you know, you're really talking about, um, you know, how to design it in a, in a way that's cost effective budget, budget friendly. Mm -hmm. So. Right. And, it, and you know, are we going to be hard rigid on this initially? No, but we got a couple of things that, <laughs> that we can all be comfortable with and that that's going to meet our needs for the next, you can find that five, seven, ten years. Yeah. Again, we're going to be guessing the same thing like a contractor mm -hmm. does because we're in a different situation than we're in three years where our contractors are getting mm -hmm. things change. We're in a, a very unique situation here on something we need to be prepared for is that you know, any change from our federal administration could change the readiness and availability of materials, labor, things of that yeah. nature. So, so, so um, that's beyond our control. I know. Th there are some problem. things, ask God, obviously, that we can't yeah. control. Um, so but we have to act in what we know. I've done projects both ways, but, you know, quite a few. And no matter which way you go, it's there's going to be crap. Is oh. what, you know, like it's just this is not a pandemic. Yeah, 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 you're going to have, um, you know, obstacles. You're going to have change orders. You're going to have, you know, things that right. don't come in where you think so. And I'm relying on other what other people's experiences. Yeah. I have not done that ones, obviously, but I have go with people who have gone down this road before. And there's a lot, there's the gotcha. Mm -hmm. I heard one say, if I had to do it over again, you know, they would have gone this way as opposed to a little bit. Because that was a little bit thing. We've well, got it kept, the changes kept coming and coming, mm -hmm. cost overruns. I'm not saying that would happen. Well, but that's in your contract. They really shouldn't. They're not, I mean, if you follow the contract, they're not. Just going on what I got told. So I, mean, yeah. I don't know how bad it was. It just kept being soft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I could yeah. I could agree and disagree all across the board. And like you said, I, I don't think any one methodology is necessarily bad. I'm just looking at myself as a representative of people that are here and the people that aren't here. And I know that there was quite a bit of interest in City Hall and where we were going to get the funding and how we were going to do it. And I thought, you know, if we can be as transparent as possible, I think that's just going to answer everybody's questions right up front. You know, mm -hmm. we just put it all out there. Say this is what it is. This is what we're looking at. If you agree, if you disagree, if you disagree, we want to know why. You know, give us an opportunity to make some decisions based on that. Clearly, a, a fire call isn't going to make it for us forever. A double A tailor isn't mm -hmm. going to make it for us forever. That's a temporary thing, right? Now. Um, big but at this point in time, and, and we know with the amount of growth we're encountering, we have to do something. Do we need to have the, you know, grand plaza? Probably not. Does it need to be a fish house? No. We need something in between there, right? That's going to work for our needs. 
and that is going to not only provide space for our community and obviously the services that we provide as a city, but also possibly um, some other entities. And those are things we all need to have conversations on. So. And this is where we start. <laughs> and it's not to say that, you know, every decision we make is necessarily the right one, but if we can be as informed as possible, I appreciate your feedback, Chelsea. I think that that's very valuable. You have a very unique perspective in the design bid build range and all the other ranges too, because I think you may have all, all the ranges need an architect, right? Mm -hmm. So I've worked with all the all right. Of them. Um, so I, I think that getting that feedback and, and whomever you spoke with, Corey and Brett, I know you talked to a couple of different people, and I've been involved in this. Um, and I know that you guys, between Jeff and Naomi, a lot of questions have been asked. So. I, I believe that due diligence has been done here. You just need to start somewhere and make the decision. When I have clients ask me this, I just, what I tell them is if you're going to lock yourself into a contractor, make sure that you trust them completely because you are in their hands. You're, you're basically stuck, you know, in their hands. So, and I to also, when clients ask for recommendation for contractors, I say, uh, I don't really like to do that because mm -hmm. by the time you're done with this kind of project, there's a good chance you won't like them. Um, no, it's true. <laughs> and also, it's, true. it's a very stressful process. And people, if you get with somebody that you don't jive with, they can that comes back on me. Oh, why'd you recommend this person? They're horrible. Right. You know, but it's it's my job to get along with everybody. So, um, you know, that's my perspective. All right. Any other thoughts, or concerns? All right. Go ahead. All right. I will make a motion to go with the management at risk for the construction of the city. All right. So then we need a motion and then get a second. Second. That's just a second. <laughs> I'll roll call this one just so it's all everybody knows where we're at. Sarah. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Kelsey. No. <laughs> Jeff. Yes. Next. Even though I'm very fine with what I have I have to. Uh, um, I think that's my personal action. Is it? Oh. <laughs> you rebel. Okay. But anyway, it passes. So let's uh, let's proceed here, Brent. Can you get the one with the process? Yep. So All right. Once we start that process to make sure that I'm very clear on Century Club, we are required to get several prices, yes. Next step in the process will be to develop a selection committee. Correct. And so that selection committee will then develop the RFQ, which will provide, you know, all the, there's a list of items that are provided that that RFQ must be linked. So we'll have that be developed and then Whoever applies. That okay. goes up the, the application. Yeah, we the, have a selection to make from there. Well, the selection committee will make a recommendation to the city council. What I want to confirm, and, and I'm, I'm not saying this. For I don't know how many people will apply. Right. There is or is not a minimum that we need to consider. It, it provides like if there's three, then you do this, but. Um, that's what, or, I, or, that's what I'm familiar yeah, with, so that's yeah. why I'm asking. And if you're not satisfied sure. with the applicants, say you get two or you get one only, the council can decide to, to open it up again to try to get more. Okay. I just so, yeah, I want to be very clear on the fact that we're locked into looking at it's in there and it says what you do in the event of. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's move on to 12. Sorry, I want to give this one. Oh, Russ, I'm sorry, I missed, I missed, I apologize. Do you guys have a location in mind? Your backyard. <laughs> it's uh, $15 a square foot. <laughs> we have some, we, we're looking at a couple places for us. So that's okay. kind of what I'm, what I'm trying to, it's, it's almost like a catch 22 year old if you want, but I I've got to kind of decide what space we need, and then I'll start narrowing down some of this stuff. Because otherwise, right now we're kind of guessing okay. on space. So, but yeah, because 
broken. Liz, go ahead. Okay. Um, we had a property owner that um, paid off his special assessments. Um, the property owner's address is 6592 Visto Street. He had um, some difficulty in obtaining the payoff amount. Um, I tried to assist him over the telephone in obtaining that. Um, the county tried to assist him and then he um, thought he had made, you know, Ample, you know, preparations to have the adequate amount when he went to go pay off his specials, and then when he arrived at the courthouse, um, the um, what he understood was the payoff amount was actually just the principal amount for remaining for 2022. So, um, so he had the um, anyway. So he's asking for forgiveness to for the special assessment interest that accrued from January 1st. It's approximately $350 in that proximity. Um, if you go to the county's website, um, it's a little bit confusing where it says, you know, the 2022 installment, which he made, and it has the principal remaining, but there's also another button that we tried to explain to him over the phone where you can get the payoff amount. So you can put a different date range and stuff, but um, we had, I guess, both the county and myself had difficulty in conveying that information to him. Um, but anyway, when he went to the courthouse, he wasn't quite financially prepared to pay the additional amount. So, but he did pay. So he ended up, you know, to defuse the situation, he um, paid the principal balance that was remaining to us, and he paid his full tax statement to the county. Um, which included the 2022 installment, and then he paid us the principal amount. So he was just asking for. So it kind of came down to miscommunication and just yeah. some confusion on the site. So what that daily interest. Yeah. Um, um, going on. Yeah, trying to explain how to obtain that information from the county website. If you call the count, the county administers our special assessment for us. How do you, and, how do you pronounce this ground? Mohammed, shape is that? Yeah, I think there's a um, there's a group of them that have the property. They own the property together, so and um, so that this gentleman has been attempting. Yes, over a, a fairly extended period of time to make these yeah. payments, and there's been some confusion. Yeah, well, so if you call the county and ask them for the state the payoff amount, they will <laughs> defer them back to the city. And then, um, then I had to go back and forth with the county, and then we confirmed like that 2022 installment. Like if you paid that, that does not reduce the principal amount that's showing on yeah. the county's Give website. The guy believer, yeah. so, seriously, he's trying. Yeah, there's okay. confusion on many, many, many different levels here. If I'm understanding this correctly, how much did you say it was? Like, yeah, $350? around 350. It's been back and forth between us. Yeah, he went to the, the county, but yeah, the county will, they'll just defer him to the website, which I was also advised to defer him to the website because they don't like to give the exact amount because of, you know, because it accrues daily. I recommend it. He's trying to do it on time, too. Uh, yeah. yeah, he was trying to get everything. Um, the exact amount when you, before you went to the courthouse. So. Okay. But it didn't right. work that you way. Guys want to do it. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the waiver request. Yeah. So, Mayor, can I get a second? Second. Yeah, a second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 So, yeah, we'll get that square away. Lucas, you got 13. Yes. Um, <laughs> This one is uh, pretty simple. Uh, the engineering department and legal department got together last week or last week <laughs> to discuss land acquisition for the uh, Wall Avenue project, both uh, east side and west side. Um, interstate has been a survey uh, or has started that process, so we know um, how much property needs to be acquired uh, for the project or the area at least. So what we need from the council is, do you guys want to try to acquire any necessary property that, that we'll need by easement or uh, in fee title? 
And the reason I ask is because I think there's a little bit of both in that area right now for the road. And then there's also a water line on the north side of the road and sanitary sewer line on the south side of the road. So our plan from a legal and engineering standpoint is to include everything together with whatever description we need and, and meeting the road and the area for the water, the area for the sewer line, and then any area for uh, future movement. But I just need to know from you guys, do you guys want to try to acquire a fee title? So owning that area, or you can try to get an easement uh, from the property owners for the necessary area that that we need. And I, I, I personally think it would be easier for the city to try to acquire it in fee title because if the city bought it, the property owner would no longer be responsible for taxes and specials on property that they can't use. You know, uh, it's a road already, so there's there's nothing that they can do with this property. If the city just obtains an easement from the property owners, uh, they're still subject to taxes and specials on the property. Yeah, so they can't use where the road is. Then. Yeah. So I mean, how much land are we looking at here? If I understand. Because there are two section lines described in that whole area, which is probably the survey of nuts. Two section lines, two section lines, one that is kind of based on the center road, one that's not. And the monuments, I'm not a survey, I'm not trying to explain it. Okay. The monuments tie into one and not the other, and they tie into the one that we didn't really want it to tie into because it makes it offset more than what it is. Yeah. So there's 33 feet each way of the center line of the road. We would be aiming for 35 feet to get us 70 feet, which is the minimum right away for a local street mm -hmm. in the forest. Not looking at 100, 150, 125, because it, it may be classified as an arterial or collector, but it, it doesn't function like that the way that it sits right now. It acts more like a, like a local. Plus, we couldn't go that far out anyway. That's part of the problem, too. So, there's a couple spots where maybe a couple feet. There might be other spots where it's maybe like 10 feet back. It just depends on that's why we're creating these exhibits that tend to wander. There are two parcels that have unknown ownership right now that they're trying to get. That's where we did the applied title action at the last meeting. The mm -hmm. tried to have different ownership of those pieces. Plus, there's pop relief on the corner of Thuy Court, whatever it is. I think you would have one here that had the river's pop relief. The car group has 100 feet <laughs> uh, 100 feet or 85 feet setback or something because that's what was considered an arterial. You had to be so far off of, off of an arterial. So all kinds of right there and then it shrinks down to the 33 feet. So can't give it three feet here. It's two feet, five feet, kind of varies. And that's why these exhibits are being prepared to be presented. Any guesses? You can feet as far as acres? Yeah. That much. Okay. I, I mean, like I said, you're probably looking at safe bed by five feet, five to ten feet more. Yeah. But it would be basically where the assumed north line is, I would say, which is north of the right way, or north of, of the water main, to be somewhat assumed on the south side, which is south of the sanitary sewer. But those have been there for a long time, right? So that's where we were talking with their land department about how to clean that up having the water, the street, and the sewer. I mean, the, to the, me, it kind of seems like a no-brainer. I mean, why, so, why would the landowner have to pay taxes on stuff that's... This issue does exist throughout that neighborhood mm -hmm. going to the south. So this would help clean it up because then we would have set right away for the yeah. title. Uh, also, if that's the route, also a bid for when we have future projects. I think that answers the question for us in the future. There's been much road, yeah, or even the water line projects, even more that helps us. In the and <clears throat> the intent would be to get an appraisal done. I mean, know, you know, what would yeah. be the value of this, but then also let the appraiser know that the road's already there, so it shouldn't have a high value to it. Out there and already can't utilize the property to its full potential. So, 
um, that's typically how any new development would be. It would just be dedicated to, right away to the city. <laughs> the city owns it in fee title. Yeah, yeah. That makes the most sense and it cleans up this whole mess that we have been racking our brains on on all. Not a year and a half. Yeah. Or more. I mean, this is this is a good opportunity to do this now. And pardon me for saying it's a set of precedent for anything that may come up for similar. Yeah. Well, like I said, the city is already doing it that way for a new road, and then it's a benefit to the existing property owners now because they won't have to pay taxes and specials on that. So they might not get a lot of value for the city to buy that land from them, but they're getting a benefit by not having to pay taxes and specials on that property going forward. Yeah. Yep. If I were a resident in that vicinity, I would perceive that as fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? We are going to come out for a motion to uh, buy it. Go through the motions to buy it or something. <laughs> Well, this one, yeah, we can make that motion. Chelsea makes a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. The motion carries. Purchase discussion. Who wants that one? I did. Go. At the protest <coughs> hearing for the project. And during our public information and comment period, uh, there was quite a bit of discussion brought up by Jason Landowner to the orchard entrance. Uh, we talked a little bit about that at the city council meeting. We talked a little bit about it at the public input meeting. Uh, what I had uh, the guys do that are designing, they just put together a little memo that just basically outlines what is going on there, what meets the requirements of highway design, and what doesn't have the requirements. <clears throat> So it's just a memo for your review. You don't have to make any decisions on it. It's just something I want to make for you so you do it. Briefly touched on this in the last meeting, but I want to it down on the paper. So uh, the fun thing, if you go to a fourth page and there is a uh, table summarizing. So the uh, stopping site distance is 100 feet, and the requirements from Nashville are 105 feet. So we failed that one. The skew is my favorite. The existing is a 42 degree skew. And the design requirements is a 15 degree maximum skew. <coughs> definitely do not count. Uh, road width is 20 feet. Uh, design requirements are 24. Curb radius 30 feet. Requirements are 100. So, PDA facilities and that. So, uh, we do identify some challenges, some proposed realignments. It is a very invasive deal. If you go to uh, the, the two maps that I provided, they're very invasive to the adjacent property. And that's something that I know we wanted to be really aware of before pursuing any type of cleaning up of that area. Mm -hmm. so, um, the banks in there are not really great. So something to think about. We don't need to make a decision on it tonight. Wow, does this but I mean what you're showing here on this map <coughs> to get a 35 foot right away really encroach on this person where they talk about the you got right? yeah clean up that get that skew out of it. And that's even still with the skew down where you can That's what the 20 foot road right in the road like. Okay. So there's a lot not right with that area, but it's very constrained with the existing. Area. So, oh yeah, there's nothing that says you couldn't keep it way That was just not really so. Piece it up, you got to save. How many active? Anybody know? The major concern we get is from people not stopping or being difficult to look to the west. It just reaches the visibility is just more. <coughs> and I think it's bus stop too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Bus stops in that intersection, I don't know exactly where, but they do stop there. So right now it's a north, northbound and southbound are both controlled by stop site. East west is a through. Um, so the buses go into the orchard there, or they just stop, okay. they stop outside on the wall and pick up. There is a bus, the elementary bus goes into yeah. the orchard too. Um, the high school bus stops at the bridge. That scares me. Yeah, there's a pedestrian sidewalk, so it's really not this 
kids. Um, I think sometimes they do stand on the north side of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so they don't see it. Because the bus comes from east to west, if I remember right, it takes about that because they stand on the north side. Yeah, so I think a lot of people when they come to that intersection, they just they pull it. They stop in the middle of the road. They don't move over, which requires then the person coming off the wall that's wanting to turn in there have have to like stop and let them out before they can turn in. I usually I'm like an expert, so I pull off the <laughs> side. I can't get in there. Um, but I've had like a couple close calls on that road um, as far as like you know accidents and. They weren't in they weren't at that point they were in the development because there's i mean the road is narrow there's turns people like you, when you live there you need certain roads needing to yield but people that don't live there don't realize that there's no yield signs and stuff um so they don't understand how the road works i guess um so like i said last time the road has a lot more issues than just this entryway point i don't know i think you would have to how would that even you'd have to have permission i feel like from those two homeowners well, to be able to, yeah. yeah well they're, they're not going to allow that to happen yeah. so it's just really not even an option yeah. um what about like the bridge as far as like um having box culverts there ever because that would be the I other would, option to i was told they tried and it couldn't construct it there is no nothing to support them that's okay. why that that's being a, a bridge that's what the that's what we're doing that was in the case of those who made a comment about that we talked about okay. that early on here yeah. what about just even wide widening the road a little bit because i think going to the towards the northeast just that whole entry point just getting it a little bit wider so that cars can pass each other <laughs> Like once the snow starts building up, you really almost have to pull into that person's driveway and let somebody buy. It's that's the problem. Really, is just a little more width on the road would help a lot. Um, and then so that you know when people are pulling up to that intersection, you can turn in because once wall gets busier, if that person trying to turn can't turn because there's a car in the road. Um, you know, that's I think more an issue. And then the visibility thing when you're looking over the bridge, it you do have to turn a bit to look. Um, I always worry about like if there's somebody like on a dirt bike or something without a headlight or like, you know, that kind of thing, or like a smaller vehicle. I don't think seeing regular vehicles is an issue. It's just like if somebody's on a go-kart or a dirt bike or some of that stuff that's really not supposed to be on the road anyways is where I kind of worry. Right. So, so this report was basically just the existing conditions and what the challenges are. So, yeah, we're about 75 percent done with design. We just get a bit more on that side. Um, not necessarily talking. Yeah, talking about the improved character, but by corridor that's the first segment that we're doing from the bridge east to the four-way stop. So, um, we'll come back with some other stuff on the actual entrance. The entrance. I just kind of want to get out. It's good to talk about it because um, yeah, have a picture so everybody's kind of on the same page. You know, what's going on. All right, so let's move on. Can I offer a thought on that? Yep. I know this is stupid. We never do this in our arterial road. Put a three way stop sign on. You said it, I was thinking. Put it. Put a three way stop sign in. You've taken care of your visibility, you've taken care of everything. You leave the. <laughs> Yeah. A three way or four way? Well, it, it is just three way there, isn't it? It's four way. Okay. What I'm saying is put up stop signs on the wall. You know, the thing about the stop signs is it would slow down the traffic. So that is one nice thing. Obviously, most of the traffic is not coming from those other two directions. So, you I'd know. I'd like to ask but, one more thing. Ask the engineer to stop making me make these suggestions. <laughs> make it himself through you. <laughs> I'll take that under advisement, Russ. Steve, hey, what do you got? Um, I will attest and back up the engineer and Russ that, and I've been probably on a half a dozen in the past three years of medical <clears throat> on wall, and it's a zoo there near that intersection and further well from where cross river headed east 
and the traffic just gets real busy and people are like, I'm first, you're second type attitude sometimes. Yeah, it would slow down the traffic a lot. And it would really help slow down that traffic. I know it won't make people happy, but um, we've been on several incidents there where we've almost had an ambulance crew and a litter get hit. Because people were trying to get around and didn't want to wait. Was stopping on the bridge a concern? That is part of it. Yeah. yeah. Stopping on the bridge. Typically, on um, like a bridge like this, you would not want cars to be stopping because but it's not, it's not meant to have momentum. A, yeah. Wait to see on them full time. <laughs> Beyond, let's okay. say, a car stopping or you have traffic just keeps up doing on there. You're not meant for that. Plus, we have obstruction yeah. traffic that will be. Mm -hmm. right. So, the traffic isn't the way. <laughs> Any way to slow down the traffic, I don't know what that would be, but just trying to get that traffic to slow down, I think would go a long way. Um, also, if there was a way to, I mean, if it was possible to put up a sign that said not a through street, this is kind of off topic. <laughs> um, a lot of people Typically think that is a through street. And some longer call It'd be nice to get a sign because no outlet. we're at the end and I people they come all the way through and then they just zoom back because they think they could have got through. Yeah, at all. Yeah. Put that in the country. Okay, so let's go on to fourteen. And you've got that one. Yes. So Cup Creek. Second edition was brought to the final of the building with an informative state concept state uh, a couple of weeks ago. And Cup Creek Second is South of North of 82nd Avenue. So it's that entire area that's being platted along the 27th. With that being said, we have a gap, and the city has a gap in 63rd Street from 82nd Avenue. South to 88. That's the north south that's been started on the east side of the school. And in the effort to stay ahead of these subdivisions, making sure we have access to them, uh, we need to start looking at, at 63rd. So we should have a location map basically that shows from 82nd down to 88, follows the, the right of way. When we have a district boundary map, it's from 88 over to veterans back on 83rd which is on the roof of the current up 63rd over on 82nd and down on 20 or 70 for our district improvements or our district boundary on this project um, we presented 66th street at the last meeting a lot of conversation on that any broker you have it's not in the oh. yeah sorry i think it was did you email us? <laughs> so for context, the 82nd north of there basically that yeah, was the southern border of that and that went up to 76th Avenue over the 17 and across where it didn't go all the way past the drain, but this one does because there's some some interconnection on 83rd Avenue. Is this the that they would be construction access exactly less than that, just a little bit. because the you know, gravity access road is on one person's property this is kind of okay so yeah oh, this would be a ball in that same yeah the entrance is seven okay okay jim what are you guys thinking about i mean what is are you looking at having this road well, we need to start the process and it is a road improvement, so there is a couple of spirit that's going through that, so we need to get that, get the report with the cost, get a permit and test and so we can get it out, let's get it through the post test period because if Cup Creek Second does go, Cup Creek Second is going to be going one way in. Yep. So we need to be proactive, the same thing in the 66 discussion. So, yeah. So, I mean, basically, so what we're doing here is getting the show started. Yep. Yep. This is going to probably be. Some of the fall, if the program goes well, and it didn't, I don't think we're going to. I don't know what your thoughts are on pursuing it. You know, Cut three seconds, just push back a year. 
Uh, we haven't gotten that far. We're still in the concept, I guess. But we, well, we should, either we, way, we need to get this started. Yeah, we, we recognize the need to bring this council to start the process. Yeah. Like, that's what I understand. And then if we got the brakes on it yeah. later, we're able to, but we started the process. Mm -hmm. so we're in. Yeah, I think on this one, we could actually combine the EMP and the credit one, unless you've got some discussion on this. Just so basically getting things started so we can get this option down. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Council makes a motion to the state and we get a second. Second. Jeff? All right. All in favor of moving the resolution for the district and for the preparation, say aye. Aye. Okay. Hey, Jim, you're good there. You may recall. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you may recall the Cass County Highway Department owns the parcel of land north of Casey. Yeah. Long Road 17. Yes. That is in the process of being heated over to the city. That was an agreement that was in place for probably most three quarters of the well, year last uh, summer. Um, <coughs> with that, there's a gap in St. Benedict's Avenue. St. Benedict's Avenue uh, will go from County 17 over to the new church. If you just oh, yeah, oh, this one. So you can yeah. see see where it is there. So it's a continuation. So at the time that the Lakeview edition was was uh, designed and bid, that property was still owned by Casman Habit. It was still in their possession of the city. So with that being deeded over to the city now, there is a uh, there is a need or will be deeded over to the city. There is a need to connect that <laughs> with Lakeview Drive and Reconfigure the entrance to Casey's, clean up that whole area, and get another way into the Lakeview addition. Yeah. So, the question that I have for you tonight is we have basically two options either create a district all on its own to construct that road, or we do a change order and add it into the Lakeview addition. So, Lake addition isn't complete yet. The plan was to always complete that in 2022. So, we could add it, design it, and change order in do that block the district. Boundary is big enough that it encompasses the cases and all those. Yep, it, just, it, does. it would be the same. It would be pretty much the same area. Same it's it's pretty ideal. So, mm -hmm. so that, or like I said, we could create a separate district for both of all. I'd say it is a change order. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be a nice That's improvement awesome. for that area too. Um, not to mention for cases and for access because there are some public things going in down there on Lakeview. So I like that. It's not, not that I'm a fan of change order, but this is one of those times where I think it can come into play. Right? So there are some requirements as to the size of the project you can change order into the original one. Yeah. So we need the second one here. We need B, we need the cost figured out. Go back and make sure that we can do it in the change order to the first one. So um, maybe the first one could just be a preference, and then we can okay. identify that once we know what the cost is. Once we get, yeah, is that sure? Yeah, I just want to make sure it's not over twenty percent of the project cost because then we can't do change. Twenty percent of the project cost. That's and I think the project. That's like that's a, I thought it was nineteen. Uh, no, no, this is you're talking about Lake Use a different one. Lake yeah. Use, I don't think it was. Which one is the? Is this all of it? But the scope area is just where you're at is so. Thank you. It was a big size project. Thank you. I want to say those are all seven or eight. Thank you. You're like, you have a million dollar project. I don't want to say you have. I don't think you're going to get that ballpark. Maybe 20% for this. Like you would say, so like when. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a. Yeah, so I, said, I don't think you're going to get it. Depends. Curb gutter. For that, for that little stretch, no, it would be a lot less sense. But okay. yes, curb gutter will work. Yeah. It would be a curb and gutter. It would be your nice street. Because that's what you have. 6.2, 6.3 6 million, roughly. Total. Was the uh, contract cost for a little year. <clears throat> yeah, well, I can't imagine if you had. So you gave yeah. an idea of the engineer estimate for wall for the east portion was like 1.8. Oh, yeah, around 2. 
So we're just talking about two million. And this is a significant small. It is, but remember, yep. change order mm -hmm. markups, yep. not right. bid. And yep. We need to be conscientious of that. Okay. Let's find out how much it is, Jim. Yep. 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 So let's. Uh, so we want to make a motion on Part B here. I'll make a motion on item sixteen. I'm sorry, 15. 15. Yeah. Sarah makes a motion. Can we get a second? Let's we'll see what it's got. Second. No, it's just a second. So, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And so, yeah, we'll just hang loose for you. Get back to each got their numbers. All right, let's go to 16. Jim. 16 is our 66th Street from 76th Avenue to 64. Um, we've got some. Packet here. I don't know if I can put it here. Let's go to the second page on that one. Let's work our way through this packet. So we've got uh, preliminary layouts and cost estimates. Oh, crap. We got the wrong one in here. So what is being. Oh, here's 66. Yep. Where, so where that's, the, that's the that's location. That still shows it from 76 out of the 64. <laughs> what line item are you under? I went to the second link. On the so PowerPoint, preliminary cost estimate. So this is a section that we estimated on, and I am interested in your opinion. <laughs> Right now, it's a three lane section with 212 for dining rooms and 50% of It's very similar to Christensen Boulevard, which is on the north side of Casco, uh, Southdale Farms 3rd Edition. Um, what I wanted to ask your opinion on was do you think this is a corridor that you'd like to see something a little different than what we've got in the other areas? 63rd is two driving lanes, one each direction, and a center turn lane, and you see a concrete. So I just was curious what your, what your opinion on that. When that was, um, are you thinking of? Well, I mean, there's only so much we can do there too because of the right that we have, right? We've got enough right away. Yeah, hundred feet right away. You could put a little boulevard thing. You could do. Uh, oh, do no. you no. I wanted to hear that. No, <laughs> no removal. I, no, I, I will yes. not do that. They added them next to my folks' place in Park. <laughs> See the trouble it has caused. They've lived in their same home for ever, and this is God. They went and put those in, and it was such a disaster. People are driving up on them. They look like hell. Snow plows can't get through them. Absolutely not. I'm guessing I got absolutely not. I got no opinion. Got opinion. Does anyone feel different? I mean, I think it is easier. I mean, if you have anything else beyond that, Jim, I just brought this whole of our bit because I know that's what they got on like 30 seconds. <laughs> I, it, I mean, they, they, the cost is pretty much the same because by the time you have to take a better and do all that, plus the maintenance in the middle, I don't, it's probably not very less. Well, on 30 second stuff, you're talking more like what we would maybe look at on 17. Um, not like continuing of Cheyenne down with like the, Something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. So that would maybe be a more, more of a giant, yeah. location than less. I was more kidding about the boulevard, but I'd rather not deal with that. Either. Just more options to throw into the wall in the sticks. So this is what more of a graphic. A nice house on the side. Um, <clears throat> apparently, the we do have some trucks on the SUVs and tires. So that shows our. 12 foot lanes each way, the we put center down. We end up with a 17 and 18 foot boulevard, so it's a nice green space area. We have a 10 foot path on the west side, and then a 5 foot here, walking path on the, on the east side. Um, is there any thoughts of putting a path on both sides? Any idea if you want to do that, or is this kind of on one side and not side on the other? I, I think that's a very I like the lamp post that has the flowers on it. I like flowers. <laughs> But I don't think we need that wide of a path on both sides. I'm going to be at the area this way. Any on the trees that were selected? Please don't. <laughs> There's trees, just but that that's what's important. Dude, yeah. Just that they exist. You're going to come off West Fargo's like 
you know, monsters and out of trees in the forest with like a tree. <laughs> we don't want that. Or single tree. <laughs> I, I will point out, you know, you mentioned the flower pots up the light posts there. Um, just keep in mind uh, many of these different elements that you're looking at, and that's just like you're talking about the boulevard. Yeah. It's going to be maintenance and try to keep it. Most likely keep it simple. If you don't, you mean you don't want to then, no, I'm just saying that if you decide you want to be more elaborate, just keep in mind there's more operations not spent with. So I did not, not say don't do it. It's just I want to make sure you know that there are cost types there. So you're not going to water the pine. You're talking to the wrong yeah. person. I think you should put Christmas lights up all the wrong types. <laughs> I like the Christmas. Okay, we're going to throw this down a little bit here. I'm just saying. You can't sleep at night. So it's just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are the there yeah. lights in our backyard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm that crazy person. Okay, we're not really here to talk about the layout. Oh no, I'm just here to talk about making sure you get that. We're here to talk about the layout and then the cost. So what you see for that whole corridor is a little over eight million dollars, eight million three hundred forty-five thousand dollars. That's the main cost. That's a sizable cost. Yep. That includes around all the Christian symbols. So made of that point that shows for me. Knowing these big enough to where people aren't driving over the side of it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's not it's worse than it, it'll be bigger than that. It's not veteran boulevard style. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Okay. That is so, the most awful report. <clears throat> I don't want anything like that. Have you seen the ones they put that they put on the main road in DL? Oh, it's yeah. You might as well just drive right over the top. A lot of people do. So bad. Yeah. So knowing that the fourth the fifth edition of South Hill Farms is kind of an Sixth edition is in their concept phase. Yeah. There's a portion of this that's going to have to get constructed. It's going to have to get started. Now, we had originally proposed just doing this segment here up to approximately the south edge of that round hole, not including the round hole. And then after discussion with the city council, we need to study the whole thing. Are we still thinking for the report that we would do two phases or three phases? What what is the, the thought on that? I mean, we talked to the school district about when they're planning to put uh, that element. We, we have it. Yeah, I talked to the park board about when they're thinking of something with their facility because they have that large lot on the south side, and it's okay. The only reason I'm asking is, do we want to have that road in prior to construction of the elementary school? We, we do type. We do. Remember, this area here is 23. I know your creek estates is probably summer to fall of 2022. Yep, which this project would get us to about there with the splitter island and the uh, dividers going into the roundabout. That tells me that leaves the gap of here to here. We haven't even we haven't even talked about 64 yet. We're just looking I know, at the six. But they, I, that's why I'm just trying to forecast for them yeah. here, like how far we want to go with that road. We know that that's going to be in play. Couple years from now. This is exactly the discussion, and it's because we have so many things hitting in so many in such a tight time frame. Trying to provide access is one thing, but trying to throw a lot of additional costs onto a fairly, you know, again, a fairly large group of people, and it's just like, oh, how far do we go with it? So, with this being the mistake that it is. Our next step, obviously, finish the report based on what you've told me tonight, and then we'll work some special assessments back based on based on that, and the new policy. We'll use this one as an express test for the new mm -hmm. policy. See where that where that puts us. So we'll bring that at the next next council meeting to do that. We'll look at that. Um, so Jim, when are you talking about like this summer type of thing? I think this is. I think from this. From the Boulevard, Christian Boulevard, South Hampton. I am so nervous about school. Well, there goes my swimming. But I mean, would you, are you talking about maybe by this gym, by this wall type of thing? Is that what you guys are doing? All the structures are next to my home. So, if the fourth edition, if the fifth edition, I mean, of South Hampton is a lot of you could access that off of 70th. Here. It doesn't meet your two ways in, two ways out. 
you need 66 to bring it to satisfy the requirement two ways and two ways out. South Del Farm 6 over here is a no go without, without 66. There's really none. Yeah. I mean, you could potentially say you're going to cross here. Maybe this one doesn't put the cross. So this this becomes very, very questionable without going in there. And quite honestly, this maybe should be a 2023, 20, and this is finished this in 22. Russell, let me ask you, you said on the Metro Cloud stuff, we know what's coming up on 64th and all around there. I'm almost wondering if we should get this thing done in one shot. You know why? Because what, what's coming and all the. Because you were doing the it, it, it is. Yeah, Russell's the one that brought that up. It isn't just what's what's coming east. It's everything we have on 66. Right. To to Conroe 17. Yeah. Going east of it, going east from there. I am frankly not concerned about that at all. Just from the standpoint of uh, I don't know if you if you watched the news uh, a couple of weeks ago, they're moving kids. From uh, yes. okay, yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. They, they can't. They can't in 23. They can't get here from there. Literally, it's like when they were doing construction at my place, and I needed to go to my neighbors to help them with their tractor, and I had to decide whether to drive my tractor across the field for a thousand feet or drive 12 miles. That was literally my decision. It's going to be the same thing for those school buses. Do we want? We're talking about a fair piece of change here. I know. That's it. But, but we, uh, you're going to be seeing uh, Deer Creek Estates too. I know. That's what I mean. You're, you're coming. You're no. I was surprised. I thought it would be here tonight. I, I. The public knows it. Okay, so we have, you're going to see it at the next meeting. I mean, so. The good news about Deer Creek Estates too is I'm really, really, really hoping they do it this year because that gets us connectivity from 64th to Deer Creek right. Boulevard, the yes. Deer Creek Road. But frankly, I don't even care if you go north of that with gravel road. But it's the connectivity. You better you better have something. Yep. You paid that section and don't pay 64th. What's stopping 64th to be the next wall avenue disaster? Nothing. 64th is going to be a major for yeah, it's coming. No, I get that, but if you pay that before you pay 64th all the way down. Well, we actually could pay 64th until yeah. we get a threshold well, so that yeah, the county helps because we can't afford that at this point. You would have a 64th segment yeah. from the roundabout area here, intersection so about where the cursor is here, 266, that stretch. Okay, maybe a 64 going east beyond that isn't really there for quite a while. There's um, a portion of that already paid. 64 is not paid at all. No, there's a section that comes up that's road that they're working on for that overpass. <clears throat> way, yeah, way, east way there. Yeah. The city of Park was not intending to connect being 40 to veterans that section of 64 is paid times two. That they didn't get that engineering planning. Uh, their staff the part was in for that to Gemini many occasions during the meetings and discussions about hey, when those happen. You'd be more likely to see something out of Veterans Boulevard for 64 connecting that way. And that would probably be developed to be a Ben 64. That'll probably be well. But this connection right here from 66. Going west, 17. That would be a missing segment at this time. However, we'd be tackling that project here, so that would be a discussion. Yeah, to not just this. Well, I, we should probably add 64 into 
Are we looking at this whole from our that segment? Yeah. From, from the where the road is over. Yep. Um I think we should get an idea of what we're looking at for cost. I agree with I mean that's just something that it's going to be part of, of an equation. Mm -hmm. Did we already set the improvement district for this road? Talk about it. Do we have it? Because originally it was proposing the entire intersection. Yeah. And that was just with that south portion from the Christians and South. But then there was this stuff we had about well through the whole through the whole area. So that's where we're at now. Just making sure we get all that right. So the next step would be to set that. To sort of talk of can you go further north? Yeah. Or just your previous can't go much further north. Yeah. Right. One more one more lot north. I mean seriously, this yeah, you guys have to look at that too. It's so open for that. Yeah, that'll be for the next. Thing. But you answered my questions. I didn't have got the opinion on it. Jim, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Has there been any type of a traffic study looking at for that low as far as traffic flow? So we started we started one back when Southern Farms Fork was coming online, then with the fifth and the sixth. I guess I lost it. He came off so late. So I was working with it's getting updated as we as we go with the fourth and the fifth. Because you know we the sixth. The reason I ask is good to do that because Terry talked about the middle school and the high school and how that traffic pattern is on the flow. Yeah, we've got the elementary school there and then all the residential area. I'm just getting, trying to get an idea what kind of traffic flow we're dealing with there. Yeah. And we'll I don't I'm not sure what the status I think. I know that the stats we talked to about okay. updating that six times. So Russ, you got any other comments on this one? The only reason I made one was because you asked me. Yeah. My, my goal tonight was to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you. No, no. Uh, no, I just because I see what's coming here, and that's going to be it's a, it's a big deal. Because because we do is the fifth and the sixth we're looking at next. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and when they do that one. The one on the east side. Somewhere okay, there. That, okay, I got it. Okay, okay. Got it. I'm, just, I'm just giving it the number seven. Uh, <clears throat> road has. Yeah, I, I get you. My my major issue for all of this has been actually has been actually connectivity for 2023. <coughs> You know, as far as just from where I live, heck, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got that. Um, it might behoove us though to get a hold of the school district and just see if there's some if they have some tentative plans as to when they're gonna use that area. Kind of like to know that when we start figuring out numbers on this thing. Yeah. You know, what do we do with the planning? Yeah. No, I don't know. All right. Okay. Anything else on that, Jim? And then we'll move on to 17. Okay, let's go to 17. Mr. Mayor? Yeah. I'm sorry, Chris. I, I guess I can just kind of maybe give you a little bit. Um, if you pull that back up, yeah. Um, so. Um, so you know where six and fifth are going to go. Um, there is a little area between where Christensen ended, Christensen Boulevard, um, kind of in that corner. That would likely, we would want to do that probably next. So it would be the winter 22, 23. So it would be construction in 23. So I guess uh, the phased approach, and I think you did a phased approach, like let's say you did. 64th and um, 66 all the way from 76 and you did it. You did that whole project of three different three phases might be something to look at to where you, you get up to a little north of 70th this year and the following year you'd maybe get it um, to the school or all the way to 64th and then third year you make that connect. <coughs> kind of something to think about. Right, but there's other factors that come into play. The elementary school might be another one. Well, that helps with some of this. We don't know. 
Exactly, but I mean, no, when, I get. when we talked to them, um, when we originally, when they were bought that lot, um, been around that five years, um, and now it's been about two and a half, so um, we'd likely be on that same path, I guess. There's some demographics that may have changed slightly too. From yeah. The, from the forecasting that had been going on at that time, because I sat in on that. Okay. I'm ahead of that right now. <clears throat> so I'm just, what I'm just saying, I'd like yeah. to get a better handle of what they're thinking after that demographer stops by this fall. And then, and one thing too to think about, if you do go further beyond uh, where that where Christensen Boulevard connects, um, you know, how do we handle? A connection to that east property uh, there that is going to be developed but we don't know what what he wants to do so i don't know if there's any been been any discussion on that um yet there's going to be more discussion further discussions i think we'll we'll kind of stop it at this point because jim's already got a headache yeah we're gonna <laughs> more. so let's just let's let's pause here on this on um, 66 right now let's let jim do some work we'll start yep that sounds good being on this one all right, so proceed on to 17. All right. Water Sewer Florida State Improvement District 122 5, Incident for Lake States Phase 2. Lake Florida State Phase 2 is the construction of the utility in the lawn on Fourth Drive and 73rd Street. There are 60 lots in the second region. 30 of them already have sewer service, and the remainder will get sewer service. <laughs> 60 lots we have water sewer going to us for local local drain regional drain to take care of the trees the original maple like state 104th avenue will get paved to burgundy drive just from burgundy drive west to the property limit and a gate will be proposed on the 104th west or at the property, the property line with a period of fourth edition uh, the reason for not paving that last half block of 100 try to as we talked about earlier somebody takes that east turn take it on asphalt and all of a sudden it becomes available on 72nd and then it was able to get out of the way so thought process there was that if that place gravel down there that people would not get a road <coughs> not go away plus there's a gate uh, the developer was, was um, interested in putting in a gate here Open to putting in the gate to control some of that um, traffic at the time. So, um, this is a curb and gutter section. This is a all facilities. Estimated project cost is about $3.5 million. You should discuss a special assess to be only a local benefit property. <laughs> um, construction would be done over two years. The sewer, the deep sewer of, on Concord Drive was installed with the original Maple Lake Estate Station, so that's gone through a freeze thaw. They put the services in on that one. The sewer services are in, but they put the water service, the water main from the street on top of that. 73rd Street would just get utilities this summer, and then it would go through a freeze thaw with the street being constructed next year. That's done one for better product and two to kind of control. The growth of not having 60 lots all of a sudden hitting the market, maybe 30 this year and 30 next year versus just 60 right out of the sheet. So that was something that the developer, the developer requested. So, question. Yep. Uh, the station's at the end of uh, 104th right there. Yep. Do you have any concerns on that right now? As far as capacity? It being, I don't want to say in the lane, but it's so Do you need to move it now or no? We're not going to move it. Yeah. We're okay. the edge of the, it's all on the edge of the right of the way. So. Does have any questions on that? If, if there aren't any other questions on that, uh, I'll look for a motion on 17A. Accept the resolution approving the preliminary entry report. Go on. Just a second. Just okay. made a Jeff to the second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, any different on B there, Jim? Probably not. I shouldn't tell me that. All right. I'm looking for 17 to be a motion to approve now. Make that motion. Second. 
Second. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. 18. Change order on that one there, Jim. Yeah. <clears throat> this is for Lakeview Drive at 79th Avenue on 63rd Street. Great well standing items that took way too long. We can close that project out. So what you have is change order number five, which is a balancing change order. There's an increase in on the $60,220.43. Um, as we've discussed in the past, these balancing change orders balance the construction contract with the as constructed quantities. Um, I didn't see anything that was a major major uh, as far as um, the deviation. There's just a uh, standard deviation. Um, Couple things were just revised due to shop drawing, drainage, big trailing size. This thing is really not a lot. Anything it really just stands out. Just finally getting it done. Getting it done, yes. Uh, this is one where we did have a little bit of out on the contract here as far as we did the increase in that. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is project. So, I just balance it. You want us to approve the change order? Correct. Assuming? Yes. Okay, does anybody have any questions on that? Anyone who's involved there? If not, I'll look for a motion to accept the change order, the balancing change order. Okay. Make a motion. Makes a motion. Give it a second. Wait until we get it all set. Sarah to the second, and she's still standing. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, Brent, let's talk about staff position. Yeah. This one is here are regarding two different staff positions, job descriptions, staff positions. The first one is regards to the project manager uh, position. This one would be intended to replace the city engineer position if you have budgeted. So while about a year, year and a half ago, we were looking at trying to bring on the city engineer position internally or on staff. Um, we were unsuccessful with that search, and what we're finding also is that the skill that we had on it was fairly low. We were getting can you know the number of candidates for that position based on the base skill that we had. Um, we said we we kept it within our budget. However, we tabled that search. Uh, this project manager position uh, would basically help with really managing all the different construction projects we have. We have a lot of different projects going on, obviously. This would help on the city side, the staff side, and city representation for public meetings and interaction with the contractors, working with the city engineer. Uh, I myself, I work with them quite a bit right now too, uh, so I would still be involved, but they would be project managers dedicated to all these different projects. They would also be involved with uh, helping out with the special assessment side, making sure we have different materials coordinated on that, uh, the amounts, and facilitate helping with public <laughs> meetings for that too. As, for, as I said, that it's already a budgeted position to see engineer one is. If we had it, have it approved within our budget, we never got rid of it. We just kept that those dollars budget for this. So this would replace that position. Uh, the pay scale for this one is less. This would be about 20 to 30 grand less than what we had for the city engineer position. So uh, within that range, the utility billing, court clerk position, administrative assistant, I was taking an administrative assistant job description and adding on the duties tied with utility billing and court clerk. Uh, we do have staff that they have those responsibilities right now. It's just been the utility billing and court clerk have fallen under the other duties as assigned. And the administrative assistant has been a very general job description. This one gets a little bit more specific in regards to their roles with both the utility building and the court clerk. So that job description is a new job description too. Typically job descriptions, we bring them to council for approval. I can bring them up on the screen if you'd like. Um, I do have them on 
I want to see you around the keys over if you want to see them there. To know. <coughs> that position would be already within our budget. Billy Billion Court Clerk Administrative System, that combination. So right now that's already within our budget. We want that and assist the funds and value funding into that. So who's currently Right now, Wendy does the administrative system. So. She does all those. So what, what would she do if she's not here? <laughs> Basically, it's no, it's not adding to her. Oh, it's creating new job description. Oh, I gotcha. It's so that way, that job description is fitting the duties that you're asked if you want a regular basis. That is what we're. Sorry, I'm just going to see Yeah, okay. the project manager is a new. Yeah, yeah, the, the project, project manager is the only position. Yeah, the project manager is a new position, but it replaces. What we had the city plant, engineer. obviously engineer. Honestly, the project manager position opens up a different among the candidates, a different type of candidates, and it provides a little more versatility and flexibility to the interactions with engineering and marketing at the city. Um, brother set of hands, brother set eyes. Someone that can be a little more involved with the instruction aspect of all the growth going on in our film. Um, and I think it's a little more reasonable than the expectation we had for students here in the Jerry Interstate doing those past year. And that's also tied to pre episode of reference time, which is it's going to be an awful lot of stuff going on in the summer. I don't need any kind of new in our areas. So we need to be updated to talk about for two years. Some of this stuff. So, so this would be different. Yes, that's a really different position. Yeah. The previous position there was well, community development director who filled the community development director. Yeah. That would be dealing with class rezoning all precondition use quite few items that we discussed tonight. Okay. That would be what I just want to make sure I understand. Yes. So this is this one. This individual will deal with a lot of the different construction projects that we have going on. And the construction projects in regards to the developments, and we have played in all the different stuff. That's what they're going to be dealing with. You know, contractors, the special assessment society, helping out with that. That's been a team effort. You know, continue to do team effort. Uh, I know Brent and I talked about this a little bit uh, last week, so um, I understand the reasons for both. Okay. Yep. Yep. This is um, falls under my portfolio, so we've chatted, and it all makes sense to me. So, all right. So with that, I'm going to make a motion to accept the. Uh, Project manager position is a new slot and we will be getting to the buildings for the system and we call it an update to the position brand or are we part of one of the cards? The needs for being that job description. Job description. Yeah. Okay. Does that mean she's getting a bonus? Or what are you planning on doing? Well with that that does have that does go up a little bit with the with pay scale. It does consider more responsibilities tied to that. But I'm looking at the positions and the job descriptions. That's what I'm going through like for tonight is this in regards to the job descriptions. I think there's more buildings in the middle. Yes, our model of utility building has drastically improved, or not <laughs> drastically <laughs> increased uh, over the last two years. So we yeah. are still I'm working to improve that like process. The, so. I'm not, maybe I'm sounding like snooty about it. I'm literally, I'm just wondering. Yeah. Is that position for the inspection that we'll be looking at in the future able to? Are they going to do any of this or? Not really. That one has its own job description. That one's administrative assistant slash under and is hydrogenated building inspections. And that job description is more geared towards 
uh, discussion regards to obviously administrative assistant roles, but then specific to yeah. uh, dealing with permits, so I'm gonna change that. Guess, things like that. So they have a little yeah. bit more refined scope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else on this guy? Does it have a little term motion to accept? So moved. Second. Okay. Johnson, Sarah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Page. Four o'clock tomorrow here for the yep. Stowe's painting. It's a yep. public input meeting. Yep. Yes. <coughs> Why is it so early? Like, John the, must be told what. This is industrial park is asking the majority of the property owners who are in the industrial park or companies, businesses, okay. businesses. Okay. So it's geared more towards companies and businesses as their okay. Oh, no, that's fine. I mean, I work at, yeah. you know, so we, we, when we are going through the timing of it, we are thinking back and forth, but the best time for it about the 4 p.m. one prior to your business for those individuals. Okay. All right. That then, Brent, why don't you go ahead and just give us an update? Chelsea, see the picture or something. Um, the only up, the main update I have is in regards to City Hall remodel sheetrock has been hung. Uh, we do have those constructive updates available for council on your team's folder. Uh, if anybody ever wants to see them or see progress, feel free to let, let us know and we'll be like see what's going on there. Uh, they updated today. They just sent one. To me, here on five o'clock or so. So good to go party up as anybody here to take care. Uh, but like I said, sheet rock has been hung. Uh, a lot of plumbing has been the plumbing has been put in. My understanding is that it's past inspections, so uh, plumbing is inspected by the state. Um, they expect to be doing the finishing touches on drywall, mudding, texturizing, and painting this week and into next week, and. They are looking at a schedule as of right now. Their schedule on the wall goes to be where hopefully completion would be beginning of April. So they're showing contractually. They have until around mid-April, but right now their schedule shows being completed by early April. Last I recall. Earlier we are that earlier trying to encourage them. Chelsea has been a great help on this too. She's been debating with Meridian. The importance of getting out sooner than later. Stressing that to them. I mean, we, we got to go with what we got, but you know, of course, we all want to get in there sooner than later just because currently it's not ideal for our staff, but all right. And our staff is working on um, deciding when those can approach, uh, getting details together for that so we can bring that to council and seek bids for that. Yeah. So that one is around the corner. We obviously don't want to be trying to get somebody to go be signing right now. I'll pull this bit. It was doable. I saw him deciding. Yes, I saw him deciding today, but uh, we are trying to get that bit together <laughs> before our inspectors get swamped. The building permits. Uh, building permits. Uh, Little tidbit information our inspectors told me about this year or this year compared to last year. Last year we had, I want to say it was just a couple, one or two building permits for new homes in the month of January. They're at, I believe, 16 month of January. So a little different dynamic this year compared to last year. And they had a handful of building permits in the queue that uh, we encouraged the builder to discuss with the developer. They are up in the Southdale area, which you heard Chris talk about earlier about the elevations having some variety. So we encourage them to have a conversation with the developer and left at that, and we're here back from them. So 
or I want to say it was about 12 to 15 to the three applications to that. Too. That's all I have. Okay. I don't see portfolio reports. Uh, last week we had the HBA banquet. A little presentation there. It was kind of a eye opener for some of them. Well, they, they know the game, but it's just not realizing all the activities going on down here. So that's kind of fun. Um, end of the month, I'm going to be giving a report to realtors. There's a group that gets together every month, and I'm giving them a presentation here to February. Um, yeah, so what's going on this month? Sarah, what do you got? Well, I'm just happy to be back. I got stuck in Texas um, with some recent weather, and I'm so grateful to the city staff that you guys take the time to post things on <coughs> the cloud because we can spend some time and stay very in the loop with our community, even though I was literally entrenched in a major ice storm in the south. So I was grateful for that, and I got back. Uh, had an opportunity to go around and I already put in the front of my list of things that I'd like to see fixed in town from run number one coming back. So <laughs> that's all I have at this point in time. I will have more of the next meeting. Good. I don't really have anything. Okay. Well, I'm Nothing. Yeah, fine. Uh, Make it up. Uh, <laughs> I was looking forward to the uh, Metricog uh, presentation tonight. Um, that didn't happen, and so I will uh, wait till next meeting, and hopefully it'll uh, hopefully connect little dots for support. Their recommendation will get stuff done sooner than later if you want to have anything done on Cheyenne. That was all. All right. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay, can I get a second? Maybe we all in favor say aye. Aye.